What is up? What's going on? And welcome to another edition of Locked On Jaguars. New year, new resolution. What am I talking about? Not mine. I'm talking about the Jaguars. And I'll tell you what it is in just a second here on Locked On Jaguars. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Locked On Jaguars. I'm the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast. My name is Tony Wiggins, and we are Locked On Jaguars, where it's your team every day, and we always thank you for making us your first listen. A quick reminder, we're free to subscribe to on our YouTube page. That's right. Go to Locked On Jaguars, the YouTube page. Make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and then hit the bell so you get notifications each and every time we drop an episode, and then wherever you listen to your audio versions of the podcast make sure you check in there every single day so you don't miss out today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel make every moment more right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet that's 150 bucks if your team wins visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started shout out to the everydayers who join us every single day you can be an everyday all you got to do is join every single day also what is going on man here's what we're going to talk about new year new attitude for the jaguars i guess we'll go through a jaguars new year's resolution even though technically this is the same year football year because the new league year doesn't start after the season is over at some point in march but you know what i mean right we're carrying over the football year into the new year New year, new resolution. We'll talk about and tell you exactly what I mean. Uh, Why I think it's important for the Jaguars to finish with a bang. That's self-explanatory. It's because of you, the fans. I want y'all to be happy. But how the New Year's resolution and finishing with a bang can kind of be on opposite ends of the spectrum. We'll talk about that in just a second in segment two. And then playoff preferences. So much talk about who the Jaguars will face if they make the playoffs. Uh, they're going to have to make it as the, the division champ. That, it's just too many scenarios for them to not win this game and then make the playoffs as a wild card. A whole bunch of other people got to lose. Let's just say they just go win. They're going to play Cleveland. And I'll tell you why it's not as a bad uh, idea as some people seem to think it is. I know I'm being a minority when I talk about that. But here we go. Let's go ahead and get going with New Year's, new attitude, basically. What I thought was the appropriate resolution, not revolution, that's Prince, uh, the appropriate resolution for the Jaguars to head into the new year. We all lie. We're going to lose weight. Even though I lost 40 pounds last year, but still, we all say we're going to lose weight. We're going to eat better. Lord, if you take this hangover away from me, I'll never drink again. How many of y'all told that lie while the ceiling was spinning around? And you probably said it when you woke up on New Year's, right? So we all make these resolutions every year, right? I'm going to make this my year. It's going to be better than the last one. It turns out to be the same damn year because you don't change your activity. I'm going to give Jaguars a New Year's resolution, but it's going to require them to change their activity. Unfortunately, it also requires them to not have a great finish to the year. Unless somebody gets smart enough to realize that you can actually finish the year strong and still realize that you can make changes. I think the new attitude has to be for the Jaguars or the new resolution has to be a new attitude. And that attitude has to be what a little birdie has told me that the attitude is right now. You are fighting for your lives. You're playing for your jobs. Yeah, somebody told me that something like that was said recently, that everybody's fighting for everything and they're fighting for their jobs. That's a sense of desperation that only desperate people say, right? The thing is, is you have to always be desperate, in my opinion. Because the difference between winning and losing in football, it could be... Very, very minimal, but 
But that little thing could be a big thing, if you know what I mean. You kind of have to understand where I'm going with that. That little thing can be a big thing. I said to get out of purgatory and become one of the top half of the teams in the league was a huge jump. And then when you want to become top half of the top half, which the Jaguars were last year because they were in the final eight, that's a big jump. The smaller step, which is a bigger step, is to go from being eight to number two or number one. You get my point? You can go from 32 to 10 and feel like you really accomplished something. But when you're trying to go from number eight to number one, that one little step is huge. So what's the biggest thing I think they can do? Is not approach this offseason the way they approached last offseason where they felt they had their team. Those boys thought they arrived, not just the team, not the players, but the coaching staff, saying we got our guys. You know what you send a message to? You send a message to ain't nobody's job on the line. Now, I know in the land of guaranteed contracts and and in the NFL, you, you got to pay a guy either way. If you cut him, you got to pay him. And then if you cut him, he's going to get paid by somebody else. And he's already got bonus money that he's playing off, if you will, sort of like a payday loan in a lot of these cases when they get their guaranteed money up front. So it's a little bit different. It's like, look, Urban Meyer telling dudes you're going to be pumping gas. If, if I, That's a joke because yeah, he really did tell people that. That was going to cut you. If you don't do this, you're going to be pumping gas. That doesn't work that way. Ain't nobody going to not mess with you because Urban Meyer cut you, okay? In fact, they might come get you because Urban Meyer cut you. And the NFL just doesn't work like that way with the union, with the guaranteed money, with the agents with teams always needing scouts, somebody always picks somebody up. So it's hard to really sell that on people or to people, especially players. But I tell you what they will respond to, embarrassment. Nobody wants to be cut. Nobody wants to uproot their family in the middle of the year, even though their money is guaranteed. Nobody wants to be the guy that goes to another team and has to walk in and undo all of the things that you've been saying that you were doing all off season with your team, mentally, physically, emotionally. Look, guys deal with it all the time, but nobody wants to do that. The embarrassment that says we thought he was the problem. Who, who wants to be that guy? Nobody does. So to tell those dudes, look, you're playing for your, your career here. You're playing for your next contract. You want to be a part of this team we, we, we got to have competition. We can't make players happy and complacent just to make them feel good. I'd rather make them not feel as comfortable, not feel as complacent, not feel as secure, not feel as happy so that they have something to prove every day and they come in and they work their butts off. And then at the end of the year, when they're standing there holding the trophy and confetti's falling on their head, then you can look at them and wink at them and say it was all worth it. That's what I'd like. What good does it do to you to have a whole bunch of culture warriors for you and you ain't re-signing none of them or you're giving money to the wrong people or you're losing games? Attitude adjustment. My New Year's resolution for this team is that they never, ever, ever display that attitude again to where they thought they had it all licked. It's, one, it's a way to say, you know, we're going to focus more on draft development and retention than going out here swinging for the fences and free agents every year. Then to basically say, we got our guys. Because just as sure as the day is long and it ends and the sun goes down and it comes back up tomorrow, what's going to happen is you're going to have draft picks every single year. You will hopefully have some cap space every single year. You will hopefully go into free agency and see at least one person that you think can help you and elevate your team. Not some guys that's going to elevate your floor, some guys that are going to elevate your ceiling. I'm a firm believer in that, and I think the Jaguars screwed this whole season up, and the players are now trying to hold on for dear life as they hopefully can go to Tennessee and clinch the playoffs, uh, clinch the division and make it to the playoffs. I'm going to tell you why finishing with a bang could alter 
the attitude or the resolution that I want the Jacksonville Jaguars to have. I don't necessarily like that, but I'd rather that happen than the alternative. What am I talking about? I'm talking about making the playoffs or not making the playoffs. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I'll talk more about that segment two here on Locked on Jaguars. What up, y'all? Got to hit y'all up and tell you about FanDuel, man, today's sponsor. Look, right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Now, the NFL regular season is wrapping up this week, but it's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Live, same game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. The best way to find popular parlays and more. So you got to just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. That's right. FanDuel is the absolute best, man. And I'm going to read this again. New customers get a $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. FanDuel is America's sports book and official partner of the nfl i rolled it along here segment two of locked on jaguars here two days into the new year how do the jags finish with a bang it's gonna be a bunch of fans from jacksonville up in nashville this week Rolling in to see the Jags play the the team that they probably like least amongst anybody. But let me just say that again. This is the team that they probably dislike the most amongst everybody. And that is the Tennessee Titans. Who are probably going to be hell-bent on revenge because the Jacksonville Jaguars took their playoff livelihood away from them last year. And the Jaguars won a game at home. The Jags were the favorite. Tennessee had a backup quarterback. Well, Tennessee's going to have another backup quarterback this week, more than likely. My man Tyler Rowland is calling for them to start their third quarterback, Malik Willis. If that happens, the Jaguars should have a field day. But wait one second. I said that last year, didn't I? It's still a rivalry game. It's still play, They still play when the quarterback's on the bench. They still play defense, and they do a really good job at playing defense. And they still have guys that can beat you up one-on-one. And outside of last week against the worst team in the league, the Jaguars have been great all season. So, no, it's not a pushover game. No, at all. It's the NFL. And these guys got to go up there and earn it. They got to go and win it. If they do it, they'll be 10-7 to for the regular season, which would be one game better than they were last year. They ended up being 10-9 and last year after playing two playoff games. So it'll be 10 and 7 going into the playoffs this year. If they win this game, and they're going to host a home playoff game because they will be a division champion again for the second year in a row. And if you look at that just alone in a vacuum, that would mean the last two years have been a success because it's been a very, very long time since the Jaguars have won a division uh, before last season. It's been a real long time since they won it two years in a row and gone to the playoffs two years in a row. So why do it, does it feel like Jack, the Jaguars uh, and the fans don't feel good about what's going on right now? Well, it's because they lost four games in a row coming in, into this, uh, uh, this past week. And there was some thought that they were going to be a double digit win team. I picked them to go 14 to three. And then I curved it a little bit and said, no worse, no worse than 12 and five, but probably 13 and four. And then they proceeded to lose games to back up quarterbacks in prime time, not on prime time. I do have to caution something, though. They've only played like two or three games with teams that don't have winning records. Yeah, they only they only played a couple of games with teams that don't have winning records. The Jaguars have had what turns out to be a real, real tough schedule. That's what happens when you win the division, though. You're going to get a tough schedule. And there was some point last year I said, during the offseason, I said that they could be a better team, but their record won't reflect it as much. It may be the same or just a little bit better, which is that's where we're headed. 
But I really, really question whether or not they're a better team now than they were last year at this point because they're not healthy at certain positions. And then there's just been something that's just been a little bit off from them from a communication standpoint, standpoint, at least offensively. I think the defense is a lot better sometimes in certain areas. I don't think that coverage is better on the back end, but I do think they're getting more pressure with the edge. And I don't think they're also stopping the run the way they were stopping the run at the beginning of the season. And I think that there's there's still more questions. And the reason why there's probably more questions, they it's likely that they are a better team, but it just doesn't appear that they're a better team, either because of health reasons or because the rabbit has a gun. And that's that's a phrase that I continue to use when I talk about Jacksonville. It's because that just means simply expectations have changed. It's different when you sneak up on people. It's different when nobody believes you. It's different when everybody thinks same old Jaguars. Well, now this year, folks are still saying that a little bit, but you know what they were saying? Let's see what they're working with. We're going to go. They really, folks came into games this year trying to prove that they were the same old Jaguars as opposed to just thinking about it. So some teams played the Jaguars very, very tough. So to finish with a bang, probably leads them to say we got through a rough patch of injuries we're fine let's just keep things status quo meaning we're not going to make any drastic changes we're going to keep our personnel together we're going to keep the scouting department we're going to keep our gm we're not making any drastic changes what does this mean well it means i hope they heard my first segment if you're going to decide to keep everyone because you get hot down the stretch, win two games, and maybe you win a playoff game if it's against Cleveland, I'm going to put, I'm going to pick them to beat Cleveland, and I'm going to tell you why in the next segment. If that happens, then they end up with all of this stuff that we've been saying, with all of the folks being angry, with the clown emojis, with all of this stuff, they end up, what if they end up right back in the Final Four in the AFC, and then what if they have a really, really good game? What if they have to play Buffalo and they beat Buffalo like two or three times in a row? What if they play a really, really good game against the Bills? I don't even want to talk about if they win it. If they win the game and then say they got to play, um, let's just say they have to play. The only reason they would have to play Buffalo now is one of those teams is like the sixth seed. If the sixth seed beats, beats like the three seed. Because that's the way it's going to go. It's going to go two versus seven three versus six and four and five, and that's why Jacksonville and Cleveland will play. So what if Baltimore is obviously the number one seed and Miami, let's just say Miami knew, Miami has to play, um, Miami has to go to Kansas City. Let's say Kansas City's the, the three seed and they play Miami. And then the four seed is whoever wins the game between Tennessee and Indy. I mean, uh, Houston and Indy, and that team has to go and play Buffalo and lose. Or vice versa. Either way, the Jaguars, if the lower seed wins, the lower seed has to play the Ravens. If the Jaguars would win, then that would mean that they would play the winner of the other game. And that could be anybody. But it's anybody that they could probably beat. The only team, I can tell you right now, I don't think that the Jaguars have a chance in hell of beating are the Baltimore Ravens. Then they they would probably keep everybody here and everybody, but if they do keep everybody and they don't make any changes, in that scenario, that's what I want them to show that discipline and say, you know what we can't do? We can't make the mistake that we made last year and not be aggressive. We have to be aggressive. We have to change our team. We have to look for a few more difference makers. Even if we have less draft picks, we have to move them around a little bit, but we got to get impact playmakers on this team. That's what I hope happens, and we'll see if it does. And I'll tell you something that has happened, and that is is that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel now i already told y'all that i believe the jaguars are going to beat cleveland if they end up winning the division have to play the browns at home and cleveland is hot 
and they're on fire right now. But I'm going to tell you why I feel that way. I'll do it in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. But first, I got to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Prize Picks. It's the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. That's right. Prize Picks is the absolute truth. And what makes it so good and so fun and so easy and exciting is that it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. I'm telling you, man, it is really simple to play and I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds on prize picks and they pay you out really, really fast when you win. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Let me repeat that for you. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Make sure you start, man. Get in on prize picks so you can win you some of that good, good New Year's cash. All right, segment number three here on Locked On Jaguars. We're at your team every day, and we always thank you for making us your first listen. We talked about a New Year's attitude or a New Year's resolution for the Jaguars, and it has all of, everything to do with their attitude and how they uh, look at every single day. They need to just keep eating people's faces off, like my man say, eat kneecaps. Knock us down, we'll go eat some kneecaps on the way up. They need to just keep their foot pressed on the gas and don't ever get complacent. Finishing with a bang, if they do that and they have some success, that would absolutely mean that they're probably going to retain everybody. But you can still retain everybody and still realize that you made a mistake last year by taking your foot off the gas and thinking you'd arrived. And maybe they don't need to do that anymore. Optimal, it's optimal for me. That's a fireable offense, no matter how good the team plays down the stretch. Unless they win the Super Bowl, I would probably change general managers. That's just me. Um, and people would think I'm crazy for saying that, but that's just me. I know how football goes, and sometimes you can just up, pop, up, jump the boogie and start winning and get hot down the stretch. But you don't always have to make things hard for yourself. You can make it a little bit easier for yourself. Now, they'll host a home playoff game. And it appears that the Browns, because of the fact that Baltimore has already clinched their division and the Browns have clinched a playoff spot, that the Browns are settled in at the number five position. That is the first wild card after the first the four division winners. And there'll be two more wild cards. But Cleveland is sitting there with a good record because they've gone on this run. They have absolutely gone on uh, this terrific run uh, at the end of the year that no one really, really expected. They're 11 and five, man. Who thought with what was going on with them at quarterback and then them losing Nick Chubb that the Cleveland Browns would have an 11 and five record? It's absolutely amazing that they have that record. They, they would be ahead of the NFC South by three games. They would still be in contention for home field advantage maybe in the NFC, depending on the tiebreaker scenarios. They have, they only got, the only two teams with a better record than them, man, of Baltimore and San Francisco. Cleveland's a real, real good team, and it seems like nobody wants to play them. But I remember a few weeks ago, nobody wanted to play Buffalo either. And then Buffalo started having a couple of subpar games, and they didn't play, uh, as, as as beautiful now nobody wants to play baltimore everybody wanted to avoid buffalo and san francisco and buffalo's kind of had to really hold off some not great teams as of late and then san francisco got molly by baltimore and now baltimore beat miami to death now everybody is afraid of baltimore rightfully so but i don't think you should be afraid of buffalo i mean uh cleveland because i think the jaguars played well when they went to cleveland after a while, they played well and got the game pretty, pretty close. But still, it was just too much of all of the things that were going wrong at the time. So the memory of that game is, is worse than it really was. And the reason why is because 
Nobody expected them to lose. That was supposed to be a game that the Jaguars won easily, but they didn't. They absolutely did not. And to me, that is what makes the difference in why you look at the game that way. Now, I really do believe that if the Jaguars play a little bit better than they played, they lost to Cleveland 31-27. They didn't have any running game, all right? Joe Flacco looked like Dan Marino, but the Jags still lost 31-27. That was a week after they lost an overtime game at home. So things really fell apart. The worst game that they played wasn't even the Baltimore game that they lost 23-7. The worst game they played was against Tampa when they were down 30 to 3 or 30 to nothing at some point. And it looked like they didn't even show up. So we look at all four of these games and we look at that losing streak like it's the worst thing ever. They lost the first two games. They were very close. And then the Baltimore game, losing to them 23 to 7 after what they've been doing to everybody lately, doesn't seem like it's that horrible game, that horrible of a game. But when you look at everything all together, it still means that they lost four games. Albeit two of them, they, you know, they scored an average of 29 points and they still lost them. Well, Cleveland was at the beginning. It was the second game of a four, four game losing streak. I actually think if the Jaguars would have played a little bit better, they would have won, but they were in the middle of that funk. I think in a playoff game, when you say everything starts over, it really does start over, and the Jaguars will be playing at home, and if they clean it up a little bit, I think they can beat Cleveland. I really do. I think if the Jaguars play cleanly, they can compete with anybody. The only team I don't know if they can compete with is San Francisco and Baltimore because those are the two teams I saw them, and they just look. Even with Baltimore and even with the game being close, it just looked like Baltimore was never in any, in any danger. The 49ers, it, it looked like they beat the Jaguars they played in 10 straight times. But the Cleveland game, no. I'm just sitting there thinking like, okay, nobody wants to play Cleveland, but if you really, really think about it, I play them because I think the Jaguars will do all right against Cleveland. Yeah, I honestly think I, – I, I do. I think that they, they'd be fine. I think the Jaguars will be fine. So in that same stretch, it's just a little bit off. It's off one week. The Cleveland, the Browns have won four straight. Their winning streak actually started with the Jaguars, and the Jaguars' losing streak started a week before against the Bengals. Something else to look at is that Cleveland's seven and two on the, in the last nine weeks. They're nine and three in the last 12 weeks. So this, this isn't like some fluky thing that they're doing here. They're actually playing really, really well right now. But I think stylistically, style, they say styles make fights. Styles also make football games. I think the Jacksonville Jaguars will give them everything they want plus some more. So let's just get in this week and then hope that once they get in, any and everything can happen. And I honestly believe the Jaguars, have what, they have what it takes now to make sure that they finish this season off with a bang for you and at least make you Jaguar fans smile while I'm sitting here saying I still want them to make changes. One of the changes I want y'all to make, if you haven't done it already, is start watching Locked On Sports Today. It is the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, man, we'll be back here with more hump day musings from around the league, probably a little bit more detail on some injured and healthy players to see where the Jaguars stand when they head into Tennessee this week. We'll have that. And then on Thursday, of course, you know we'll have our crossover as usual. It's always fun to talk to the Titans and let them know who their daddy is, and I'll be doing that. And then, of course, Friday we'll do a preview of the game. But until then, you guys make sure y'all take care of each other as always. I'll see you next time on another edition of Locked on Jaguar.